is it all right for me to ask? I don't, I don't well, know how they, I, I didn't check out. Sorry, I didn't. I, I, right. I was kind Off of very way. conscious. I, I didn't know whether I was allowed to ask, <laughs> but I don't know how, you, how do you approach that? Like being overwhelmed by the process in the studio? How do you, how do you deal with that being, um, that sense of being overwhelmed? Mm. Well, with me, I like to focus on thing, one thing at a time and don't try and do too much, too many things at once. So say I'm working on a project, I'll just focus on say, maybe the, the melody first. I go to the piano, create a melody and then work it from there. Or if I feel like doing drums, say one day, I'll do drums first and build up from there. I, I won't do a little bit of everything that makes sense. I focus on the sounds that I know that, that I worked really well and then take it from there. I mean, is that kind of similar to your kind of approach as well, where you're focusing one or two things at a time, then move on or? Well, let's, let's, let's have a conversation then about, because the, the, the score I'm working on now, Dewborn Dawn, is very, very different. The mm. director, the, the game developer, and the, the creative director wants a very melodic score. Um, they want, it's a computer game. So we mm. want, um, <clears throat> you know, that, that post-Wagner, John Williams-esque, this is the theme for such and such. It's, it's going back mm. completely in the opposite direction, which, by the way, I really love. I, I, I love that. Approach. And, you know, you mentioned melody. And I think mm. what I do is I, uh, I have a, my iPhone. I have a, I have a one-touch system set up on my, my iPhone so I can dictate melodies to myself. Mm. Mm, and, I do and, that as well. Great. Yeah, mm. there you go. So do you always start with melody or? Not always, but because I'm, I'm such a kind of avid fan of a powerful melody that that's what I go to first. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you yeah, play piano too. So yeah. I'll sit at the piano and create something and build it up from there. I get, I get my, my theme, say, yeah. and build it up from there. And I, I, I can create without, I hate something big headed, but I'm able to create a lot of melodies really easily on the piano. So I could just record, say, X amount of melodies and then yeah. and then choose which ones are my favorites and build up from there. Also, I do a little test as well the next day that if I like what I made the day before, then I move on. Because I'm such a perfectionist, which I'm sure you are too, is if I I, I hate everything that I make, but there's an odd one that do I you? like. Not, do you? Uh, there's a few things that I like, obviously, but I'm such a perfectionist thinking I could be better than that. I could do okay. better than that. I could do better than that. And although I've obviously improved over the years so much, and I, I've loved some of the things I've come out with, to me, it's just okay. Although right. to someone else, it's like, wow, that's bloody amazing. Now, how the hell right. do you do that with yeah. that? Like, to me, it's just okay. Because I, I don't like to see myself as this amazing musician composer. I think, I think it's, just, it's just what I do. It's just I make something. I think it's easy and move on. But that is... How do you how do you feel about your work? Because I listened to your work again yesterday. It's, it's amazing. I mean, when you listen back to it, are you a big fan of your own work, or do you feel oh, it's, I could be better than that? It's, uh, um, no, it creates, it, it's like listening the, to your own voice back to things like oh, I yeah, hate my own voice. which I hate. Yes. I absolutely. <laughs> I sound like I sound. Yeah, I absolutely despise listening back to my own voice. It's like it's like that's not me who put that <laughs> that's just all nasal it's awful so i think there's um do i like my own work yeah i think yeah i think um it's just such a difficult question to answer it's like when you see a photo of yourself yeah do you think yeah he's he's a he's a good looking bloke yeah, you know it's like well i don't know i don't know i don't know i'm too i don't i don't know and then someone else that sees a photo of you and they're like you're looking really handsome there, Mike. You're looking, that's a nice photo of you. And I'm like, thanks, mum. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, but yeah, it's, it's really difficult to tell. I think there's a separation. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a time, la uh, there's, a, there's an amount of time uh, that elapses. And then you can go back to your music and think, yeah, it was all right, that. Yeah. I've written some stuff, that I, I'll be, I've written some stuff that I don't like. Mm. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, like a lot of the a lot of the horror stuff. I think the the the, the music for the horror film, it was, or well, the, the thriller film. Do I like it? I mean, it's not likable music. It's very, very effective. Mm. Um. So, but then the melodies that I'm writing for the the soundtrack that I'm writing for Dewborn Dawn, yeah, I'm really enjoying listening to that because it's it's melodic and it's it's a nice. It's, it's a nice listen. And I, like you, um, I do a lot of melodic creation and chuck 90% mm. of it away because, and also don't forget, like 
you know and you know sorry you know of course you know this mm. but we go with a and we th- oh this is a great track and mm. the creative director will say yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a bit i wrote um i wrote a main i wrote a main theme for our lead character um and it and and the and it took me quite a while and i was i was really pleased with that i thought this is great i'm like you know you, you go to you go to your team don't you like look i made a thing i made a thing look and they were like it's it's all right it, it just i'm not you know and they were great and they said i don't want to use musical words but it's just not grabbing me and i was like yeah. all right well wow. then if it's not and if it's not grabbing them then it's not going to grab um anybody else so i did a version two um and everyone loves it and and to be fair it's a better version. So sometimes yeah. there's that, and also there's that additional dimension, isn't there? Mm. Do you, do you, is it good enough for you to like it? Oh, I think this is great. I, re- I, th- I, yeah, the rest of the team don't feel it's, it's as good as it could be. Mm. It's true. Okay. Like, here you go. So I'll let you finish. Sorry. Not so well. You go off and then you, you know, you, 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 you feel a bit like, oh, all right. I, actually, to be honest with you, I've gotten better at that over the years. Um, it's easier to take knocks like that. Mm. I find it, it's water off a duck's back these days. I'm like, all right, okay, fine. Uh, and then I go and get on with something else. I do a, you know, I do a new version. I'm, I've become pretty good at not getting, uh, not letting rejected cues knock my confidence, which mm. I think, you know, if you're, if you're a younger um, or emerging or developing composer, I know that's really difficult to learn. You know, when you work in, in a in a client facing industry, which which I do with my my you know my media work, it's it, it can be very very difficult to realise at the end of the day you're um, you're essentially you're looking for approval. I mean, quite mm. literally, the term is I, I got a queue approved. You know, um, it's the term we use, and and it is external approval. You need to have it. You need to have that music validated by somebody else because they're going to put it in their game, film, whatever, and that can be that can be really tough. 